welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time and joining our webinar. Uh, so as the topic name suggests, we are talking about what's the right CRM for you. So um, there's so many options available in the market with so many different types of pricing ranges and features. And it can get a little over, overwhelming to when you comes to selecting the right CRM for your needs. So uh, basically we wanted to clear the air for you. And uh, we have come up, done a lot of research and come up with our uh, uh, good, like very good information that will help you out when it comes to choosing the right CRM. Uh, getting down to our introductions. So hi everyone, uh, again, this is Neeti here. I currently work at uh, Extra Edge as a branding manager. I'll be hosting this session. So basically doing the mod moderator work and uh, guiding Abhishek in the right direction when it, to have a meaningful conversation, basically. Uh, moving on to the speaker, uh, we have Abhishek here. Abhishek, could you introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, thank you, Niti, uh, for the warm introduction and uh, you know helping me to guide me in the right direction. I think that's a very good way of putting it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I like to be guided in the right direction always. So yeah. So, uh, so Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, you know uh, uh, Abhi, and I'm the co-founder of Extra Edge. And uh, at the core heart, uh, you know, I'm an admission admission expert or admission product expert because we are helping uh, admission teams across the globe with education brands to increase their conversions and to optimize their cost of acquisition and to make sure that the counselors and the recruitment teams, uh, you know, perform to their best of their abilities. And that's what we do and uh, have been building this company for the past uh, five years with my co-founder Sushi and we work with around 250 odd brands uh, helping them to you know reach their admission goals so uh, super excited uh, to talk about a topic very close to our business and close to our heart and uh, and happy to answer your questions Katie. yeah um so thanks for that brief introduction Abhishek I'll just uh, get down to the basic like technical requirements of the webinar like um uh, setting up the ground rules basically um so as you guys must have, must have noticed you don't actually have uh, the option of the mic and the camera option so uh, basically uh, we have ensured that to so that the flow of the webinar is maintained uh, but that doesn't mean you can't communicate with us you can uh, interact with us on the chat section you have if you have any comments if you have any if you like the webinar you can always give a thumbs up and if you have any questions uh, please uh, use the q and a option that is in the menu you can see it at the bottom uh, we'll be taking the all the questions at the end of the webinar. So just some housekeeping. Now, moving on to the agenda. So as I mentioned, basically, we are going to talk about how you can go about choosing the right CRM for you. So some of the major topics that we are coming going to take up is like, uh, why does C CRM implementation fail? Uh, what is the difference between the different types of CRMs or, or different types of products that look similar to CRMs? Um, and then of course there are industry specific CRMs. So what should be the right CRM for you? So largely this agenda is going to cover that. And also uh, from a budget perspective, from a monetary perspective, how much money you should actually spend in a CRM. So these are some of the topics that we are going to cover in this webinar today. Uh, moving on finally to the actual session, Abhishek. Uh, before that, let me just release the poll that we had. So we are going to have an interactive session and we would love to have you to actually communicate with us through chat and polls. So we'll be launching a couple of polls like this within the session. So I've just launched a poll and we'll move on to the first topic of the day. Uh, I really hope you guys answer this poll till then. So the first topic of the day is why does CRM implementation fail? So um, Abhishek, a couple of questions related to that, directed questions to that. So uh, why does CRM implementation fail? What are the stacks around this? So what is like uh, yeah. the typical failure rate you could say? So Niti, uh, very good question and uh, like a very uh, you know funny one to start this uh, you know whole webinar with. So you would like to imagine that such a very important business process that impacts the revenue of a education brand, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why does it fail? I mean, yeah. is it the lack of importance? Is it the lack of understanding? Mm -hmm. uh, why? And, you know, according to Harvard Business Review in mm -hmm. 2020, there's a survey and they realized that one third of all CRM implementations across universities and any education, uh, you know, institute of brand fail. Now, uh, just imagine that, I mean, when we say fail, it does not mean that the implementation has failed. It also mm -hmm. means that the people's time, the resources, uh, 
you know the man hours put to implement that the discussions with implementation partners all have gone to you know kind of no fruition at the end of the day yeah right? so so i think coming to your question why do they fail uh, i think you know, there are three core aspects of you know i would say what how and the people mm-hmm. so what part is that that lot of uh, admission heads or recruitment heads or even people who are bringing crm to the education institute think of a crm as a tool to only manage their leads and admission okay they do not think this crm as a tool to increase the revenue mm-hmm. right and it's a mindset it's a mindset that i need to manage leads i need a crm of course that's the that's like talking about that if you want to build a house you need bricks right yeah i think you don't need bricks you need a house that could protect you from bad weather from and so on and so forth so it's protection it, mm-hmm. it gives you protection so the thought process that crm has a direct impact on the venue it's not considered like that one second is that that uh, you know the how part the integration of marketing and other integration aspects like call uh, email sms and all those things are not done properly uh, with the with with your crm so crm is seen like a point solution and mm-hmm. not as a solution to your entire sales and marketing and that's mm-hmm. the how part why it fails yeah right and the third and very importantly is that that crm cannot be a directive from a head of recruitment or head of enrollment it it cannot be it has to be driven top down but mm-hmm. it cannot be forced top down yeah so you know it's like managers see it as a way to inspect and not see the way to coach and that's why at times people fear of bringing transparency into the organization because they feel that they are threatened by it not it's a it's a force multiplier to improving them so i would see that these are the three things right that rethinking not rethinking your crm as a tool to increase revenue not mm-hmm. integrating your marketing efforts your and your ancillary communication channels Also with the sales activity or admission activity, and third being managers providing, uh, you know, not providing thinking about it from a not from a coaching perspective, but from an inspection perspective. That's where the people hurdle comes because people are scared, and that's why CRM implementation generally fail in the organizations, especially in the education organization. Yeah, yeah, uh, and like cost of failure usually. What is like the typical cost of failure? <laughs> well, from few lakhs to crores. I mean, Im- imagine. a big university which is having around 10000 students i mean they are doing around 1 and 1/2 lakh 2 lakh applications you could just imagine that uh, you know uh, the kind of integrations the kind of communication the kind of uh, you know funnels the kind of inflow of application from website from landing pages from mm-hmm. publishers is enormous and if i move to an edtech company right where they are selling courses in batches so it's a retail offering getting rolled out around 20 batches in a month so you could imagine that somebody put their head to negotiate select do multiple demos from vendors finalize mm-hmm. then started to implement money was put up front and all went down so i think i would say that to start with single digit lakhs to probably crores and and i, I just want to make a very interesting point here niti probably your crm cost 5 lakh rupees but if you start to implement it and your implementation fails then probably you have you have probably have a sunk cost of more than 5 lakh rupees any day and we'll talk about it when yeah. yeah so yeah yeah it it, it it it's it needs to be seen from the lens of time and effort going down the drain yeah. yeah it's not just the amount of money you've actually invested in buying the cr which is like the effort that goes on down into implementation to onboarding um and research then once it fails you have to actually additional research again to go go and look for another crm so yeah that it's not just the money monetary cost okay yes uh, so we'll go down to the next topic actually of the conversation now we now finally understand the reasons behind failure of a crm implementation and uh, through the poll i've actually seen that a lot of people do have tried implementing the crm before uh, but they have failed too so uh, it was an important point to discuss uh, in the session so i'm just releasing the poll right now uh, meanwhile we'll move on to the next topic sure so that's crm or erp now uh, a lot of uh, in the education industry there are a lot of products that are used uh, from an admissions perspective we've heard about erps a lot and uh, so there's a bit of a confusion between the two types of products so what's the difference sure so i think it's a very common question and there's a lot of myth around it uh, mm-hmm. so uh, if you think about the old days of industries and manufacturing units 
Then mm-hmm. ERPs were very prevalent to manage supply chain, to manage mm-hmm. inventory and logistics and day-to-day operations. And SAP was a very big player in that category, right? Mm-hmm. And then then Salesforce came along and uh, they said that hey, look, the salespeople need to use a focus tool, and yeah. the workers might use a lifecycle tool, right? So uh, in from an education perspective, who are the workers? The mm-hmm. workers are primarily the teachers, the faculty, and the academics. which is the core offering of an education institute the educators right yeah. they, they are the operations guy and uh, they need to manage things from attendance from lms uh, to uh, you know to curriculum and uh, testing and, and assessment and so on and so forth right and there is lot of compliance around education in india even in the private sector in schools mm-hmm. as well as schools it's probably more higher than higher education even in edtech there is a coaching there is a bit of compliance coming in so mm-hmm. erp needs to take care of accreditation compliance and things like that so basically it manages your entire life cycle of an org right from a simple thing from an attendance to a complicated thing like a nac or ugc or you know kind mm-hmm. of aict accreditation yeah yeah and it's used by the the people on a daily basis like the teachers and tech teams but crm only manages prospect sales and customer and your admission journey right and the people who use the crm are not same as the faculty in there could be an intersection to that these are really good smart marketers a uh, sales people uh, you know uh, the guys or the counselors or the counseling managers right they are a very different breed they 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 have a different very different mindset right and uh, this is also fueled by the fact niti that there are three unique things about education in india especially the from a sales point of view that it's time bound uh, generally it happens in cycles and seasons second mm-hmm. is that that it's irreversible most of the times if my yeah. dad uh, puts me into a college pays couple of lakh rupees there is a very remote chance that i'm going to revoke that and i am not going to go to anybody else right second and third being is that it's a hyper competitive market i mean in a in a 2 km radius in bangalore there are around 12 universe 12 institutes and five universities so they are competing with the same student so you know so these three pointers make uh, you know a focus dedicated to like a crm very existential for any brand especially when the go to market for everyone is digital first today Mm-hmm. so i think uh, you know any rt stake around 8 months to uh, implement and i'm on board uh, probably their admission will get over in 4 months so mm-hmm. you know so i think uh, that's a difference and that thing needs to be seen as a different lens so uh, uh, what i understand is there are two completely different aspects of admissions that are managed by these two platforms yeah. so uh, i sh- ideally i does it make sense to we use both of them together of course i mean you need to use both and that's why you know any kind of erp pairs very well with a crm and they work together mm-hmm. hand in gloves because one takes care of the pre sales and the process or what we call the admission application process till the payment of the fees and then mm-hmm. it's get routed to the erp for life cycle like curriculum attendance uh, their marks their performance their assessment and and leading on to placements and alumni management mm-hmm. so i think these two work hand in hand and any good crm has a very deep integration and should have a deep integration with any erps present Uh, in the in the institute, and we recommend a lot of our customers at Extraedge that they need to have a robust ERP. Yeah. So, um, that was actually insightful, and I hope uh, the audience understood. Like, finally, got the uh, basic clarity between a CRM and an ERP. Uh, okay. We'll move on to the next topic uh, that we that is horizontal versus vertical CRMs. Uh, now, we talked about two different types of products that are used in the admissions. spectrum basically now we are get drilling down into the different types of crm itself uh, right. so again uh, best way to differentiate between the two yeah so uh, so niti uh, recently i bought a kurta mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> i wanted to wear it in a wedding and uh, i went to big bazaar first because i was buying other stuff too and there were all kurtas there even for wedding mm-hmm. but i did not like any one of them right because i had very specific requirements then i went to fab india and i, I was glad that i went to fab india there was a exquisite collection of kurtas and matching you know things and it was really amazing but then i really found that i needed to go to manewar and finally i went to manewar and bought a kurta there mm-hmm. is i'm giving you this example is that 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 there are some very vertical offerings in the market who cater for a, either a particular industry mm-hmm. or a particular occasion and that's the difference between horizontal and vertical crm so when you say that horizontal crm then a real estate retail e-commerce you know pharmaceutical uh, you know uh, or or education anybody can use that product it's basically yeah. managing the customer journey 
Mm-hmm. But when you talk about a vertical CRM, then you're talking about companies like Zenoti who do it for uh, spa, wellness and fitness centers, or we are talking about Waymo who do for fintech mm-hmm. and insurance agents. And it's a very well sought, very, uh, you know, kind of clearly explained industry where we solve for a particular problem for that industry, right? So to give you this context to it, that, that, you know, the CRM marketplace recently has become very increasingly vertical and with apps for just about every industry, advertising, auto repair, hospitals, education, entertainment, and these deep verticals have end-to-end process flows and support for industry regulations, for industry workflows, and so on and so forth. So the day they get shipped, Niti, they get yeah. shipped with these workflows, processes, regulations, playbooks on day one. Yeah. And no, the vertical SaaS provider doesn't aim to be all things to all people or cover a broad product category. Instead, mm-hmm. they focus more on narrowly in specific industry verticals. And since vertical software is purpose-built for these clear industry niches, uh, then it is more impactful and it's more, uh, you know, it it, more, it directly impacts that. And by the way, it's also expensive. That's why a Manivar and Fab India is more expensive than a, you know, Big Bazaar Kurta, by the way. If you probably might have gone on one of them, I'm sure all of them. So that's why, because it solves quickly and it solves for two problems, time to market and time to life. How quickly the product is provisioned and how quickly yeah. you realize the value, both are sold. So uh, again, like now that some clarity between the differentiation, um, then the question is, which is better? I think, uh, uh, I don't think that's the right question. The, yeah. the right question is that, that uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of user journey you want to measure, right? So uh, if I'm a if I'm a owner and I own a real estate company, I also happen to own an education company. I also happen to own an aviation company. Right? Mm. Then probably if I have to manage all these kinds of customers, then I'll close my eyes and just implement a horizontal CRM. But if I'm running an education institute or a coaching institute or an edtech company, I have very focused needs. So yes. needs of a you know kind of a probably. A Khan Academy is very similar to the needs of a Baiju today. Right? Mm. And the needs of a Corsera is very similar to needs of Udacity or Udemy today because they're in a similar market. So then, uh, you know, the admission head or the sales head needs to take a call of bringing. And I think the verdict on the wall is definitely vertical CRM and more deep expertise. Okay. I think uh, now, now people will have a more clarity about when it comes to like, well, should we go for something like a HubSpot or a Salesforce or something like an extra edge basically? So, so I think uh, yeah. Just, I think it's it's very interesting if you look at the history of HubSpot, uh, Niti. I mean, when HubSpot mm-hmm. came in, Pardot and Marketo were the leaders, and yeah. HubSpot today is real about fifty million dollar company in the next in the last ten years. And the reason they succeeded because they were they were building only for inbound marketers. Okay. When when, when inbound marketing became a thing, and they coined this term, and mm-hmm. they became very very successful because they were only building for new age marketers. Who mm-hmm. attract crowd by organic SEO and adwords and traffic like that, and mm-hmm. and and still Pardot Marketo still exists in the in, in 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 the world. It's not a thing similar to that. I mean, it's very similar. It's not that we are seeing something different of education CRM with maybe companies like Extra Edge. This has already happened in other industries, and education marketing is currently happening as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, s- uh, now, I hope uh, you guys have understood the difference between uh, a vertical and a horizontal CRM. Uh, moving on to a more niche topic, uh, what are education-focused CRMs? So, what, sure. yeah, so Bhavishek could uh, talk about that. What oh, are education-focused CRMs? We kind of address that, but you know, you see that education in India has a lot of regulation in the university segment. Yeah, I mean, you need to have a, you need to capture X number of details in Y number of formats of a student. Mm-hmm. Even if you go to a tech companies, they need to capture more data, more context, so that they could look at cohort analysis. They could do cross selling and upselling of courses because they have multiple courses, right? And they need to also customize based on their workflows and needs of education. Which I told you three things: uh, you know, fast moving market, irreversible sales processes, and also they are seasonal in nature. So to cater yeah. to that, uh, you know, there needs to have a focused uh, in terms of workflows and playbooks for this particular industry. And mm-hmm. uh, if I need to put it, is that that you know there are few very core advantages of having that. One is that that your important sales and marketing process will become simple and transparent. Right? Mm-hmm. You will have very easy collaboration and data sharing between your marketing and your counseling team. 
Yeah. Also, there is a very clear effective data storage for all the leads. You know which channel and what's the kind of return on ad spend that you're getting when the leads are coming in that journey strat, mm -hmm. right? Which allows you to run important and, and critical impactful marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. And finally, at the end of the day, you can track and monitor, uh, you know, the leading and lagging indicators across programs, performance of your team across geographies uh, and across source where you spend money, right? So this is in itself, uh, you know, a huge ROI and especially mm -hmm. education focused CRMs come pre-baked and shipped with these playbooks and reports and analytics on day one. And nobody needs to sit and build it out. Of course, there are customizations here and there, but you know, it's like uh, uh, all I did is that I took out that Manevar Kurta, wore it and went to that <laughs> wedding. <laughs> I I did not went for altering. I did not went for this and that or repairing in questions. It was meant for me, for, meant for that purpose and I started to use it and it paid me more it's okay I have kept it in my cupboard for another wedding that I'll go to soon so yeah so uh, since talking about education focused CRMs what are the top CRM brands that uh, probably people should look into yeah I think uh, it's always a very tough question for the admission heads and the and the buying managers uh, and mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the answer lies somewhere between uh, you know uh, what's your budget uh, how much fees uh, or revenue are you making? How many counselors you have and so on and so forth. So if you have a very huge, heavily complicated system, right? Then there yeah. are very big companies like Salesforce who probably cut to the chase, but they're not built for education per se. In yeah. US, you have companies like Elution. In UK, you have Full Fabric, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and these are some of the companies in people. In India, you have companies like Extra and Leads Squad where we mm -hmm. operate in these segments. So I think the all are good products. Yeah. All are good products, but I think it's, it's more about, uh, you know, seeing it from a lens of uh, uh, what kind of revenue, what kind of sales process or admission process you have, what kind of compliances you have. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, Nidhi, I would say that who's the guy who can go ahead and get you implemented? Yeah. Provision. I think that's where... That's a failure question that we started with, right? <laughs> and, and, yeah. and the proof of coding will lie by talking to existing customers mm -hmm. that if they had a great experience because they're very similar lookalikes. Mm -hmm. So if I were a university recruitment head or a or a tech company sales head or a enrollment or admission manager, I will go and do some due diligence for existing customers of these vendors and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Not only trust what they're saying, but go and check and then I will choose the right one for me. In that case. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, important points to remember, uh, uh, guys. If if you have any questions related to the past couple of topics that we have talked about, please go ahead and ask your questions in the Q and A uh, button that is in the menu. Uh, we'll be taking up all of your questions in the Q and A section. Yep. Um, moving on to the next topic, Abhishek. Uh, now we have talked about uh, different types of CRM, education yep. focused PRM. Finally, coming down to the actual main point, people want to know yep. how much should you spend. So yeah. what's the baseline cost one can expect from a CRM? So do you like magic? <laughs> sure. Yeah, definitely. Do you want to see one? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think, uh, let me answer this question by empirically showing you how to arrive at a cost, right? So uh, allow me to share my screen. Please. Yeah. What I'm going to show you is like, uh, is an analysis of past few years that we have done internally at Xtrial because we work with a uh, lot of education institutes and brands. So we get a sense of what's working in the industry. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll quickly share you, sorry. So, you know, so this is like a calculator that, uh, you know, uh, built. so basically this calculator tells you that how much you should be spending and how much uh, cost savings you will get out of a CRM, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll come to it. So it's very basic input thing and we can make this available to the audience later on. So the first bracket is basically your marketing. So you enter all your yellow ones, how many mm -hmm. seats, uh, how many average fees uh, and so on and so forth. And all these things are calculated automatically. So this is yeah. basically uh, your revenue. And this is basically your marketing cost taken at 30%. Mm -hmm. Generally these good brands spend around 20 to 30% of their uh, fee revenue into marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And it includes ATL, BTL. Then there are sales stats. So mm -hmm. how much your sales workflows of counselors marketing with the average salary taking into consideration how much that the average salary comes in and how many people do you need based on the number of admissions that you need to do. Mm -hmm. right? Then there's a very important element of what we call ratios. And the ratios are like 
you know kind of uh, sales metric sas metrics for company so there are some education metrics in india and in us for lead to walk in walk into registration or application and registration to enrollment and these metrics are more or less i would say there is a there's a bell curve to it they average around these numbers only Mm-hmm. so you know you have your marketing spend you have your sales salaries and spend you have your ratio you will clearly take out that how many you know kind of enrollments or registrations and walk ins you did it's basic maths which is mm-hmm. what we call back mathing right yeah so once you do this back math right and these data is already available to every uh, you know admission person in the organization be it a tech company be it a university then there are two scenarios uh, either you are already using a crm or you are not using a crm or using some kind of uh, erp or crm or so on so for these are two situations right i just don't use anything or using google sheets or using a crm in that case there are some clear metrics uh, that we can think about nitty that you know uh, how much how much improvement you will see to your metrics like lead to walk in walk into mm-hmm. enrollment before uh, you know you use a product in this case it's extra just to be any other product too. right we talk about us because we know those data from internally so if you are using a crm you still see a benefit from a vertical crm and if you are not using a crm definitely you see that benefit out of it so you see these numbers are higher these numbers are a bit uh, on the higher side as compared to that but these are significant enough right and when you take this data uh, across all your these matrices right so then there is a there is a rupee value attached to each funnel because we calculate cost per enrollment cost per lead right in this case so you know we we can clearly see that you know uh, there's a potential revenue impact of around near about 50 50 to 60 lakh and there's a potential impact of around 70 to 80 lakhs here so i'm not telling you how much somebody should be uh, spending in a crm i'm telling you that if they use a crm what's the potential benefit they, they could see right again we can make this calculator available it's a very simple calculator put out with formulas there but yeah. the, the beauty of this is that that first of all you need to establish that once you use a product mm-hmm. what the product can fundamentally do to you in absolute terms of money and revenue yeah once you yeah. are right there then you can back math and then you can go from there yeah this is actually a wonderful uh, calculator i'm sure the audience will really appreciate using this so guys we'll be making it available for you um, uh, after the session in mean, a uh, couple of days uh, so you guys have an opportunity to actually calculate and budget for this year and that you go for so uh, yeah and, and that was just, like yeah. i would just like to add one more thing that that i think this exercise should be a mandatory exercise in every organization Mm-hmm. there because once you put down these numbers it helps you think how many people do i need right yeah. uh, how much money should i spend and these yeah. are all function of important metric that every organization knows what's their revenue of fees in a year everybody knows that right and it all derives from that there are some ratios and then you'll be able to so then when you're spending a 10 lakh rupees in a crm you'll not shy away you know yeah. in india uh, people are very wary of spending money on software we are used mm-hmm. to you know a uh, pirated version of office 365 right so, so <laughs> yeah. i think then the 10 lakh will not seem very enormous it will look like a normal number because the roi is around 70 lakh 80 lakh of crore yeah so bye. i hope you guys found this insightful and uh, really like the budget calculator now we'll move on to the next topic of the session uh, before that i'll run the poll that is relevant to this topic actually uh please uh, answer this poll so that it will help us in uh, actually making this intera- uh, uh, session interactive so who should be using a crm uh, we've talked about like different types of crm so uh, how to calculate for a crm but like who are the right people who, who are the users of the crm uh, and now uh, getting into that a little bit uh, common misconceptions about usage what what are the yeah, yeah. misconceptions of usage let me let me talk about the fun part first the misconceptions and then we'll come to the mm-hmm. part of who should be using a crm yeah i think yeah. some of the misconceptions are that only admission teams will use crm mm-hmm. okay. another misconception is that that we will only use crm during the admission cycle mm-hmm. okay third one which is my favorite one we should buy a cheap one right? yeah so the cheaper it is the better it is of course we negotiate that's okay but the cheaper it is the better it is mm-hmm. and erp will do everything uh, and 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 it will take care of it and it will admission is a module it will take care of it yeah uh, we should buy one with more features the more the feature the better it is uh, you know 
also one of the misconception is that that people feel that crms are going to be used on the web on the browser i think today we see that around 55 to 60% of our users are on mobile so does it have a strong mobile component it has been better not that's a misconception people have right mm -hmm. and also you know uh, people think that uh, i think the misconception is that i have got a crm then i'll go and buy a ivr then i'll go a mail provider i'll go buy a text provider then i'll mm -hmm. go and buy a you know a, a, an analytics tool mm -hmm. and then i'll try to stitch all of them and uh, bam your integration time goes up to around 6 months just to use that so i think these are some of the kind of misconceptions around this and the biggest misconception perception is who should be using only the admission team you know i think admission uh, counselor outbound team atl btl teams uh, the uh, telecallers then the marketing team the digital marketing guys your digital marketing partners your yeah. publishers uh, yeah. your uh, your cro or cxos they should be seeing reports out of the crm a single single source of truth so your chancellors md uh, owners of the institute uh you know owners owner son i mean whoever is running the show right they all should be glued into the crm if they're not glued into the crm which is a clear measure that the crm is not adding enough value to the organization so so basically um, anyone who is to a degree at linked to the admissions process okay. and so, beyond let me put it in different way anybody who's incentivized to increasing the top line and to mm -hmm. optimizing the bottom line of the business they should be using a crm and and yeah i mean that's a true north yeah. i'm i'm quite nicely put <laughs> in one sentence uh, so my guys now you know who should be using the crm i hope it's one of you actually uh now moving on to the next topic that is uh, what does a good crm look like what qualities should uh, some uh, when you're looking for a crm what are the qualities a person should be looking for okay so i think uh, niti we generally talk about the good things let me talk mm -hmm. it from a anti perspective what does a bad crm look like yeah so a bad crm looks like where all the data is not flowing in from a lead channel or demand generation channels onto the crm mm -hmm. facebook leads not coming google yeah. adwords not integrated application yeah. is going somewhere different and so on and so forth that's a that's a that's a that's a indicator of a bad crm uh, the second indicator of a bad crm is that that you have a team of 50 people and only 10 people are using it which means that either the people who are purchasing are not sensitized to the fact that everybody needs to be wired in or b uh, they don't feel that your crm is doing good job that's why the adoption is low mm -hmm. that's a second clear indicator third indicator is that that you are not communicating via the crm which means that you are going outside the crm and making that phone call doing sending that email sms and and text and so on and so forth right so and 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 a very good example is whatsapp right you yeah. see what whatsapp is doing you can chat call send money you know very soon you can start building your own websites also on whatsapp i don't know maybe microsoft yeah. so it's going in that direction so you don't want people to go away from the platform because context switching is very expensive so that's a bad crm looks like and uh, i think uh, definitely a crm is not open to customization uh specific customizations uh, and it has built in a modular way fails because mm -hmm. there are some very specific things about organizations which they need to do recently we had a customer niti who wanted their money to go in different accounts yeah so there were three programs and the three programs were run by three different trusts so they needed the money to be routed based on the course to different accounts yeah um, yeah it's a very interesting case but generally lot of other crms offer a payment gateway <laughs> but based on the course routed to a different bank account and a payment payment gateway route i mean that's a very specific thing related to an education brands so you now you need to have the ability in the product to do that and finally i mean bad customer support uh, you know counselors and admission teams were not born of their mother's womb knowing how to use a crm right? yeah so they need to be trained they need to be made under understand the importance and from a revenues construct and also mm -hmm. from their own performance construct yeah. so uh, yeah. if that's not happening and the and the service provider and the crm providers are not focusing on things like certifications and training and ramping and onboarding and adoption mm -hmm. i think that's that's a clear sign of a bad crm mm -hmm. that has got implemented so e e that's even more worse by the way yeah. and all these things done right are are the as what a good crm looks like 
So uh, what I've understood is uh, when it comes to looking for a good CRM, you're not just looking for a product or a tool. You're also looking at uh, uh, other factors into it, like uh, service, how it's not a tool, it's a solution that you're looking at. So uh, how is the support happening? How are people helping out in on the order, onboarding process? Um, and is it finally solving your problem that uh, okay. you should be solving? So, yeah, so I'll keep on going to my three things. What? Rethinking yeah. your CRM as a tool to increase admissions and revenue. Yeah. Two, how integrating all your channels and all your comms with, with the admission activity and people. Providing yeah. coaching, bringing people, uh, and seeing CRM as a force multiplier of improving improving their performance of closing more admissions than seeing as a reporting need to inspect and critique on their performance. So I think these are three things. Aptly put, aptly put. Uh, so finally, we are getting down to the last topic of the day and then we'll get down to the Q&A section. Um, guys, uh, you have the opportunity to have any questions related to the previous topics we have talked about. Please go ahead and ask in the Q&A session. Uh, if you have any uh, thing to talk to us, you can also mention it in the chat. So uh, now we are at the last topic of the session, that is how you should measure marketing and admissions. Uh, now the question to you is, Abhishek, what role does the CRM play when it comes to the overall health of an education institute? Yeah, I think uh, it's a really good question. And, uh, you know, there are many thought processes, but I'll just try to kind of share with you. I think the first and more important is that that there will be a lot of reduction in the cost of expenses. Mm -hmm. And you think about it, uh, I think the most costly thing today is in any organization, even us, is the salary paid to the people in the organization. Yeah. And as the work increases, you hire more people to do things. And some of the things are very mundane and menial things, which people keep on doing again and again. People do it because it's critical. The business process is critical, but the yeah. task is mundane. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you save a lot of things by doing that. It could be as simple as that, that at 15 different stages, right? Different emailers need to go to different students. Somebody's manually doing it or doing it on an automation tool and they're struggling to put that automation in place. Yeah. So I think that's where we save a lot of uh, cost of expenses get saved there. Right. Second, I think I would put Niti is that customer or student loyalty. I mean, imagine a brand where if you put a communication or a query there, you could answer that query in a couple of minutes. I mean, think about it when you give a call to customer support in Amazon, I mean, mm -hmm. you get a call back in probably what around five seconds, right? Yeah. That's where they, that's where they win, right? That's how they won markets, especially in their market. So if you are able to immediately respond to a student's query question, send out that email immediately to them, you have their attention yeah. because they're expecting some communication to come. Just imagine now you took out money from ATM and you did not receive an SMS. I mean, you would probably be checking your SIM card that it's not working properly and not questioning the bank that they did not relay the SMS to you. Yeah. So I think that's a very important thing of building that student loyalty in your in your thing. And that leads me to the third point is that making sure that you have a very clear history of or the journey of every student uh, and prospect journey. Because that journey, if a journey is multifaceted, if a kid is inquiring you from Facebook as well as Google AdWord, also coming to your website, spending 10 minutes there, Mm -hmm. then you really need to measure these multi-source attribution because that's every source of attribution is a, is a is a point of intent, right? It's like he's poking you from different places saying that I am interested and he's shouting it out. You're just not hearing it, right? So I think that cycle getting it, uh, I think becomes very, very critical for these organizations. Yeah. And uh, finally, last but not the least, you know, a couple of things that, uh, you know, it, it allows you the admission teams, which is working like a very, sharp well-oiled machine to plan their tasks and follow-ups which mm -hmm. they most of the time miss right and uh, finally last and last for the managers and for the team member leaders and also for the cxos in the organization a very clear way to do mis and analytics uh, I, I think uh, that's where you measure two things what is the return on investment and what is the return on ad spend these are the only things you want to measure how quickly with velocity you have been able to fill your seats a mm -hmm. and b how much money you have taken to get there these are the only two fundamental questions, right? Uh, along with time that are need to be answered at the end of the day. So I would say that these are the few things which probably make or deliver huge ROI to uh, any education brand. So uh, very, uh, very insightful, Abhishek. And I think I hope you guys understood from a ROI perspective why CRMs are important. Uh, if I, we move to the Q&A section, Abhishek. Uh, we, yeah. I can see quite a few questions. Sure. This is a, 
chat also uh, from Mohammed. Uh, using CRM tool misguide many that we found obsolete solution of building relationships with customers or students. How much marketing experience and admission team required? Sure. So I'll answer the second part first. And I think uh, it is always good to have uh, um, you know uh, an admission team who has worked in some other admission team with a couple of years of experience that definitely uh, kind of uh, looks good. But a uh, lot of organizations also involve their existing students in your third year, fourth year in the admission. And a lot of people also involve Mohammed their alumni. So if you are running a say Institute X and you have an alumni uh, who passed out from the Institute and for example, he or she is taking a break or, you know, kind of, uh, you know, taking it slow, uh, do not want to end up uh, kind of, uh, you know, working in a MNC or IT and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. I think they are a very good candidates for bringing them in uh, along with the skills and quality of great communication, mm -hmm. uh, empathy for students yeah. and ability to listen to queries and a very sharp sales mindset of answering to objections when they come, how you're better than A and B and C, they need to have a sharp answer there. So I think these are the, so I would say that one or two years of experience working in an admission team is great. If not, then great communication and or alumni leveraging because they, they have already trusted your brand once they have, they have studied there, right? By choice or by chance. So mm -hmm. they are a good evangelist uh, of that. So I see a lot of teams uh, who are our customers, a lot of alumni are working there. That's mm -hmm. a, in the US also, that's a very prevailing thing. And, uh, and I think uh, I, didn't, I do not understand the first part. The, uh, using CRM tools may may misguide many that we found absolute solution of building. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, no solution is no it all, and you know, kind of one one stop. Uh, um, I have I have seen that that no tool can change your business process. A tool is just a kind of accelerant. Uh, mm -hmm. If your guys are picking up the call and talking to the student and not talking well and not communicating well and they are pitching like a car salesman, then no CRM in the world can help you. So I yeah. think uh, it's very important to train your people on how to talk to a student, especially post pandemic, when they also need to be very, not tone deaf, but they need to be empathetic. Uh, uh, would you agree that CRM managed by recruitment team in the industry? Yes, of course, uh, you're right, but it needs to be managed by the recruitment team in the industry, no, no doubt about it. But it's much more than that. It's, it's also about a brand. Right? And brand is not only linked to your uh, students, it's also linked to your publishers, your partners, your digital marketing people. They also need to have transparency into the entire process because you're pouring money and, and telling, giving money for demand generation, lead generation. So they are also equal stakeholders along with, although it's owned by the recruitment team and the, and the finance team, I would say, but there are a lot of other stakeholders who need to be wired in the system. We have a couple of more questions in the Q&A section, uh, Abhishek. Okay. Uh, so, uh, somebody has asked us, what devices will staff use? So again, uh, you can always, uh, you know, good CRMs generally have both capability of being on mobile as well as web. And, uh, some of them also work in offline mode now. So, uh, albeit, uh, I think, uh, I think mobile and web are great. And, but if you have a consumer application, like a application form or application tracking system, then in that case, it also needs to be mobile and tablet friendly in this mm -hmm. case. And the good way is to have an app on Play Store. So if mm -hmm. you're having an app from a consumer side on the Play Store, I think that helps. Along with that, uh, I think uh, mobile and web are, are more than enough. And just make sure that you have around 2-3 Mbps internet connection. That's a prerequisite. Um, so uh, one more question is, so which employees or departments will use the CRM? Yeah, I think we touched upon that. Uh, yeah, along yeah. With the, so the minds are still remain the same, the bottom line and the top line. So let's look at the bottom line. Who are the bottom line? These are the people who are the custodians of expense. So, uh, you know, marketing guys, uh, you know, and then uh, uh, budgeting guys, head of admissions, these people who are given a budget of spending, right? Mm -hmm. They are the guys who would want to use. And there are people who are the spenders, sales guys, telecallers, counselors. These are the people who spend that. And they are on the front facing sales side. They should be using and i think it needs to be a pyramid it needs to be linked to the managers to their head of admissions head of sales chief revenue officer md ceo cxos as well as chancellors and vice chancellors because when you have a monthly meeting or a weekly meeting and we did a webinar with you remember about cadence that when you should yeah. meet 
So if you're meeting on a weekly basis, your chancellor or a VC or MD will ask you a simple, simple question. How many admission, how many applications, how many pipeline, how much money you will spend, how much revenue has come in. And often than not, eight out of 10 people do not have a straight answer. And these questions demand straight answers. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think uh, you know, these are the people who should be using it. Um, so we have somebody who has asked a question in the chat. In the chat. Yeah, a few of them in the chat. So how would you rate Illusion? Uh, so Illusion is a, a great uh, product, uh, but uh, you know, Illusion it was primarily uh, meant for big US universities. That's how it was meant because US in US you have public universities, private universities. You also have uh, what we call community colleges. Mm -hmm. So it was meant from a hierarchy and perspective of compliances in US education norms and so on and so forth. And it has grown to a really big product and big system. Uh, so uh, of course, it has a lot of features. It has a lot of things. They also do consulting and do uh, manage services for you that they will themselves generate lead an application for you. And uh, so I would say it's a combination of product and services both. Niti. So uh, quite a few questions actually. Uh, can CRM help in understanding how admission team is handling answering to prospect students so that right team members are rewarded? Correct. I think a very good question. Uh, you see that uh, people get scared of using a sales software because somehow intuitively or you know non-intuitively the managers and their sales leaders pass them the feedback of, uh, of, of whoever closes wins, whoever does not close dies. Mm -hmm. which may be true, but I think it needs to be communicated better. I think the communication should be that whoever is closing well should tell others how they are doing it well. And whoever is not closing well should mm -hmm. identify where are the problems, you know? So if you start to look at it from that lens, then you go back to the product and look at what exactly I'm doing. So the, pro the problem is always in the process. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then the problem might be in the skill set. Now, skill set can be taken care of. They can be trained, ramped up. And if they're not getting ramped up and trained, they can be let go. That's okay, right? But yeah. you need to go through that process and arrive at a let go. And second is the process. If the process is broken, then it's not the responsibility of the, of the counselor, but it's a responsibility of the council manager to look at the process or the head of admissions to solve for the process. So I would say that uh, it is uh, very critical and important that uh, this analytics and, and, and this transparency allows... Uh, the meetings that happen on a daily basis to be run in a more data-driven fashion. And uh, the question should not be that who to fire. The question should be that that why he's not able to perform and what should we do about it. Mm -hmm. So we have another question actually. Uh, what's your opinion on using bot for CRM? Uh, definitely uh, when the website traffic is higher and uh, when you have repeated queries coming in, which is exactly how education queries are for most of the institute, you should definitely use a bot. Uh, but uh, instead of going for a horizontal bot solution, look at a vertical bot solution who only do for education because the recipe and the flow becomes very important. Uh, also, you may want to look at WhatsApp as a bot service because yeah. kids are generally on WhatsApp. So if you could provide them a meaningful experience, routing them from a search console on Google to a website from there, a, a WhatsApp button and then to a bot, that's a better workflow than mm -hmm. uh, just having a chat bot everywhere. Or chatbots are very important from a website point of view they will continue to be powerful but whatsapp will play a very significant and important role thank you Mohammed, for their very interesting questions uh, that you have given yeah, you. uh will uh, do you want to wait for five minutes for more questions if people have any uh, i think uh, you are guiding me Keep <laughs> i write on schedule for the first time <laughs> yeah yeah sure it's good to be on on time yeah, yeah. Uh, let's wait for a couple of minutes. If uh, people have any any more questions, we are open to that. Uh, otherwise, we'll close. And if you have come up with any questions in future, you can always email us uh, uh, with your questions and queries. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we have one more question. Um, how big should be the organization to start using CRM? Yeah, so uh, start from day one, at least thinking about one, if not having one, right? And uh, I think uh, any so anybody starts a business to grow the business, not to be a small business. 
so sales software should be the first and foremost priority uh, and into the into the system and they need to get it wired in very very quickly i think uh, you can still manage your sales process without a crm right up till a point if you have a strong process in place but lot of organizations do not have a strong process in place and crm helps them to get there so i would say that as quickly as possible uh, up till to give you a very binary answer five counselors or telecallers definitely yes you should so um, guys uh, uh, you will be receiving the recording of the session and uh, the um, calculator that we have created uh, after the session is done so uh, don't worry do we will be giving this th things to you uh, one more question uh, which crm would you recommend for startups <laughs> yeah i mean like uh, <laughs> it's a very difficult answer to give because being the founder of a crm company in education right i would i would definitely say extrage for mm -hmm. for education brands uh, i would say that uh, let me answer in different way whoever in your sales and demo calls you feel you can trust go with them i mean at the end of the day it's not the tool and the product everybody can build features i think it's about the trust you have in that narrative and a pitch and their understanding of your problems which gives you the confidence and comfort that they will be able to solve for your admission problems so i think award the person probably not the product and the product needs to be equally good by the way yeah, yeah. so quality of the product should be constant but uh, add on should be the people also and the culture yeah, yeah absolutely very important okay mohammed um so uh, hopefully we have uh, managed to answer all of your questions properly uh, as i mentioned if you have any additional questions uh, uh, in future you can always uh, email us we'll be sending out uh, the recording and the uh, budget calculator to you so you can always respond back to that same email uh, so we'll come to a close abhishek yeah yeah thank you so much thank you, thank you. And, uh, i think we did a great job of finishing on time yeah so, uh, right on time and, uh, that that that's a great indicator of a great webinar so thank you niti for guiding us and uh, lovely meeting all of you and uh, you know uh, and uh, we can definitely uh, kind of uh, answer any questions offline and uh, definitely the calculator will make it available to all of you yeah yeah, yeah. thank you everyone thank for you coming team. to the session have a good yeah. day bye have a good day bye bye, bye.